Okay, today we're going to talk about models, submodels, groups, and views all in Xlates. We'll use a custom model builder that's also going to help us to create submodels. Now you can do all of this stuff within Xlates, but I found that this, this tool that's available online, it's free and it, it works a little bit better than, than what you have available in Xlites. Okay, so let's dive in and I'll do a screencast so you can see better what I'm doing on the computer. So in a previous video, we created the model of our snowflake. And once you have your model built, this is when we can add submodels. And submodels, you can think of it as taking your model and chopping it up into smaller pieces. Let's look at our snowflake, and I'm not going to go through all of my submodels, but one idea that you can do is if you wanted to make the star in the middle, you can divide up that star into smaller sections, and we'll call this smaller section star one. And then the next section over, star two, star three, you can also make another submodel with these nodes in in between the stars. So I'll call those star valleys. And then all of these submodels, once we're in X lights, we're going to create a group called star. And that group is going to contain nine submodels. So you'll have star one, star two, and all the way until star eight and then you'll also have star valleys all under this group star. So you have the star group containing all of these. Okay, then you can have another submodel and let's call it spinners. So this could be one arm of your spinner, but let's not just make this one submodel. Let's divide it up into three separate submodels. So let's say you have this be one submodel. You can have this be another submodel and this be another submodel. And we can call this first one spinner 1-1. One -one. The next one could be spinner 1-2. And the next one could be spinner 1-3. And all three of those are going to make up spinner 1 and then you'll have eight of those. And you, once you have spinner one through eight, you can put those all in a group and call it spinner. So you'll have, these will be groups. Spinner one through eight will be a group, and each one of those groups contains three submodels. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now let's jump back over to the custom model builder, and I can show you what, what it will look like on here. So I've added all these submodels, and you can give them a name. So you just click Add Submodel. It adds another one to the bottom of the list. You can give it a name, and then you select which nodes you want in that submodel. So for example, Spinner 1-1. I've selected these nodes to be Spinner 1-1. Then Spinner 1-2 are those nodes. Spinner 1-3 are going to be those nodes or pixels. So once you have all of your submodels created, you can go to the export tab and you'll export it as a .x model file. And that's what you're going to bring into Xlights. I've already exported mine. Let's hop over to Xlights and we will add it to our display. Okay, in your layout tab, in order to insert your new model, you're going to click just once on this import and then you're going to click and drag to draw in your model then a window will pop up and you can select wherever you had your .x model file saved okay this is my snowflake right now i do not have any groups added and there's a couple things you need to do over here to set it up strings mine actually has five strings and my individual start nodes are going to be different because my last one has 77 pixels. The way I wired it, I have five different um, inputs. The 
Snowflake itself has four, and then the circle is one, and it has 77. The outside is 77. So I have 84, add 84 to each of these. So I have 84, start channel is one, plus 84, then the start channel will be 169, plus 84, plus 77. Okay, so since I have five strings, and four of them have 84, I have to set my individual start nodes. They're not evenly dispersed. My last string only has 77 pixels in it. So I had to change the start nodes of each one. I'm going to use the start channel. Okay, what we want to talk about though is our models and submodels. So up here, if we click this arrow, it drops down and it shows us all of our submodels. Now we want to group these into, well, groups. So what we can do is add a group, and let's just make our star group. This will be a group. Now, I can add down here. It'll give me all of my submodels that I can add to my star group. And I can just double click on those and it adds, adds them over. Okay, and then over in our display, it shows what we've added. And it looks like we've added everything except the star valleys. Let's find those. Star valleys. For some reason, it put that up here. Okay, now we have our star group. Let's add another group. Let's do the spinner group. But we're going to do eight different spinners. Spinner one, we're going to do the arms of the spinners first. So 1-1 one through 1-3. One and then we're going to add another group, spinner two. And that's going to have 2-1 through 2-3, add group, spinner 3, and that'll be 3-1 through 3-3. And you can check to make sure you add the right ones. Spinner 4. This takes a little while, but it's not too bad. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, spinner 5, spinner 6, spinner 7, and we'll do spinner 8. Okay, once we have each of our spinner arms, we can add another group just called spinner and what we're going to do is we're going to add these other spinner groups to it so let's find where those are here we go so we'll add spinner one two three four five six seven eight and now this spinner group has all all of the spinners inside of it okay so we can have groups inside of groups and you'll have your sub models inside of there if you really want to, you could break every, you could make a submodel for every pixel and that would give you ultimate control over how you light things up, but that also takes a lot more time. Okay, so I'm going to add some more groups and then we'll jump over to the sequencer and I'll show you how to set up. Well, here, let's skip ahead. I'm going to actually close this and open up a different show folder. Okay, once I have all of my groups, I'm ready to go over to the sequencer and we will talk about views over there. So we'll go over to the sequencer tab and I'm going to go ahead and open a show. Okay, if you notice, my view right now is not very complicated and that is because I set it up so that all I'm seeing is my groups. So I have my group view here. Now what you'll normally see when you first start is you're going to see here, I'm going to just add default. Your default view is just going to have everything. It's going to look like this where you, and this is, keep in mind, this is just one model. If you're doing a whole house with multiple models, this can get pretty, uh, pretty hectic, pretty quick. In fact, I'm going to change something right now. I'm going to add one more group. And I'm just going to call it Big Snowflake 1 All Groups. So I'm going to add all my groups to that, all the groups that I want. So I'm going to add Circle 6 because that's the outside circle. I'm going to add my Spinner Group. I'll add a couple of these other things. Actually, I'll take that one out. You can always change this later. So I'm going to add Branches. I'm going to add the Spinner. I'm going to add the Star and the tips, I can give myself other options. So that's called Big Snowflake All Groups. That's a group that contains all of my groups. Okay, I'll save that. I'm gonna go back to my sequencer, go up to displays, and now I'm gonna have this just be all, the, all my groups. So the default 
I am now going to change. Actually, I can rename it to Snowflake One All Groups. And all I'm going to do is add Big Snowflake One All Groups. Okay, now that shows that's one model, but I can dig down and look at all of my individual groups. So I have my groups. If I want to add, if I want to just add effects to small parts of it, I can. But that view, once I start adding more models, it'll be nice just having one section that I can dig down and if I want to just focus on one model at a time, it's a lot easier to, to do it this way than to see every single thing on one screen. Okay, so that's how you can set up views. So we, we talked about models, submodels, groups, and views in this one. Next time we're going to actually talk about sequencing.